In today's video, I'm gonna go over how you can apply conditional formatting rules to a pivot table. Now this is a bit different than your normal conditional formatting that you will do on regular cells. And I'll show you why. So let's say here, I just wanna not bother with the pivot table. I'm just gonna say, okay, I'm gonna select all of column K here, create a new rule to say, I wanna flag any amounts that are over 30,000. So I'm gonna set up a formula and say, okay, because my first selection is K1, that's my starting point. So I'm gonna say if K1 is greater than 30,000, then what I'm gonna do is format this so the fill color is a dark green and the font color is white. And okay. And so a couple issues, obviously it's highlighting the grand total as well as in this case. And it's also highlighting the text, which obviously isn't what we want, but that's not the biggest issue. So let's say I make a selection here where I uncheck some boxes. You can see now it's not highlighting anything at all. And even if I reselect everything, it doesn't work, right? So what happened? So let's go back to manage rules. And let's say this entire worksheet. And you can see now my range is entirely messed up because, because I changed the size of that pivot table you know, it's not grabbing absolutely everything anymore. It's just grabbing the parts that weren't changed, right? So because I changed the selections that messed up with, with what it's applying to, even though I selected the entire column. So just applying normal conditional formatting rules is not gonna be, um, is not gonna be optimal when you wanna apply it to a pivot table. So let's go over different ways we can apply conditional formatting here. So, if I click on one of these cells and go to conditional formatting and select new rule, you'll see that I've got a couple of options here. I can apply the rule just to that cell. I can select all the cells showing the sum of sales amount or all the, se all the cells showing the sum of sales amount for the sales rep and the product category. So let's take a look at what each one of these means. So I'm gonna select all, all cells showing the sum of sales amount. And so for the lowest values, I want them to be light blue. And for the highest values, let's make them dark green. Hit okay. And so now you can see the light, the light blue is being applied to the smallest values and the largest values in the grand totals are the darkest shade of green. So it is working as, as intended. It's not gonna run into issues if I make changes here, right? So it's not the same issue as I had when I selected just the entire column. So it is working a bit better in that sense but we can still fine tune this a bit further. So let's say go back to manage rules. We can edit this rule and let's say we want it just where the sales rep and the product category intersect. Now, if I hit okay and apply, you can see now it's ignoring those grand totals. It's strictly looking at where the product category and the sales rep intersect with one another. So it's ignoring those grand totals. So this can be potentially a bit more useful of a formatting rule for you if you want to avoid that. Now let's make it a bit more complicated and grab it s some extra fields in here. So I'm gonna pull in the date. So we've got sales rep broken down by date as well. And the interesting thing you'll notice is that it's still respecting those rules of the product category and sales rep. So here we've got product category and sales rep. But once we get down to date, we don't have that formatting applied, right? So if I go back and go to go to manage my rules, let's go to edit. You'll notice I've only got two options here, sales rep and product category. So I can't go to a third level deeper than that. If I want to apply to everything, I'm going back to the second option here. Now, let's say I, I do want to apply a rule for the date and uh, the product category. Right, so if I select one of these values, so I've got the date and the product category. Now if I click on new rule, now you see now I do have the option for date and product category. So let's say I select this one. Again, let's use a two color scale. Um, the lowest value, let's say a light orange versus a dark orange. Hit okay. And so now we've got two sets of conditional formatting rules. One that's applying f to the sales rep and the product category and one that's applying to the date and the, the product category as well. So if I cl click on one of these 
go to manage rules we see date and product category sales rep and product category so we've got multiple rules in there so this becomes just like a, a normal conditional formatting setup where you can have multiple rules and you can apply them apply them differently so that that's how you can make that that work and again the benefit of doing it this way is regardless of our selections if we change uncheck recheck items it's not going to mess up our conditional formatting which was the issue when we're just selecting an entire range so by doing it this way it's a lot cleaner and easier to to manage and obviously if we want to change these formatting rules we can do so as well by just removing them editing them or deleting them as we otherwise would so let's say I delete that one hit apply and okay and let's say I add the region as well so I've got uh, sales rep date and let's also add region on here. So obviously this can get, start to get messy. Let's put region above the date. And so we've got a lot of different filters in here. And so if you wanted to look at a conditional formula rule that had the region, then we want to make sure that we select a cell that contains a line for the region. Now if we go to conditional formatting, select new rule. Now we'll see an intersection of region and product category. So this is how you can manipulate this to basically uh, determine how you want uh, your conditional formatting rules to be applied. Obviously, we can't change uh, what intersection points we want. Instead, we need to select those intersection points, at least one of them, right? We just want to, if we want um, it applied to the region and the product category, I want to make sure I select a cell where those 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 two intersect and then when i go to conditional formatting create that new rule now i'll have that option available for me so by doing it that way you know we can set up rules and let's do it one more time let's do um light purple to dark purple this time so hit okay and now it's just going to apply to those intersection points where we've got the the region and the product category and then it's applying our conditional formatting rules to it. So as you can see, a lot of benefit um, to doing it this way, as opposed to just using the, the normal conditional formatting rules you would when dealing with the simple range, because the pivot table obviously by design is gonna, is gonna change in size, whether it's expanding or contracting to based on your selections. And the last thing you want is for your conditional formatting rules to break because, because your conditional formatting rules are not set up properly. By, by selecting a cell on your pivot table and then going to conditional formatting and then creating a new rule, you can set it up properly the right way, whether you want to have, have it apply to all values or just those certain intersection points, you can do it um, by going to the new formatting rule option.